Hello and welcome to my yearly Valentine's Day video where I talk about co-op games to play with your girl boss wife based on what I've personally played at least the tiniest bit to assess whether or not it is a good couple's experience. As I'm now a married woman, obviously my opinion on the matter is supreme. Sometimes I've bought games for the sole purpose of co-op and they just don't work that way. In fact, last year's winner of the Don't Buy If You Want to Play It 2 player is Kataria Fables. You can find out more in my impressions video, but when I say you're tethered, I mean you're really stuck together. This video is a mix of games that have been released since last February, but not every game I peeped has gone on sale, so no Darkest Alliance from me. But there's also a lot of games from prior years I haven't covered. The focus is primarily on Couch Co-op with a touch of competitive and multi-system games too. Now my cream of the crop top co-op experiences of last year are Kiwi, that is an adorable and super fun game where you're two Kiwis working in an Australian post office, doing all sorts of things from sorting letters to baking biscuits in extremely odd weather for the outback in seasonally inappropriate fake holidays, but I'll leave the rest of the ramble for my review and you can watch that for more details. But just so you know, there is a bubble wrap popping minigame and a very adorable costumes. WarioWare is a great series wherein you play micro games, that is mere seconds long minigames with only a moment to pick up on the instructions, and then being sent on to the next one. With WarioWare Get It Together, you can play the campaign entirely in co-op and, outside of the counting games, it is a great help. Especially as this entry focuses on characters having unique abilities that can beat game conditions in different ways. Plus, there's competitive modes to show off who the best really is. I, and likely many others, have already mentioned Overcooked before, but the All You Can Eat edition is the best place to start if you don't own any other versions, as it comes with Overcooked 1 and 2, and both of the game's DLC, bringing with it cross-platform play. Plus, now you can both be platypuses, so what's not to like about the most hectic kitchen yelling about who had the right play in actually game of all time? And as far as Overcooked 2's campaign is concerned, I find 2 player much easier than playing with 3 or 4, and I did do a review of that one. Not only are there a ton of retro games on the Switch thanks to NSO services, the Arcade Archive series, ports and remakes, but there's also retro styled games too. Though when it comes to buying your own retro games, do research to ensure that they aren't just the take turns kind of 2 player. Curse of the Moon 2 is a great classic Castlevania style game, letting you play in co-op from the get go. Then once you've beaten the first level, you can be different characters. As gameplay revolves around switching between these characters to navigate the environment with their varied abilities. In co-op, you can stand on each other's heads or temporarily get carried. If either player dies, they don't get revived until both of you do. Just try not to stray too far from each other. Spelunky and Spelunky 2 came onto the Switch finally, and 2D platformers are often a tricky thing when playing tethered, but at least their ghost can be helpful. Personally, I think the first Spelunky might work a little better just because the default speed isn't running. One thing I enjoy about this genre is actually turn taking to try and do better than the person next to you. Alternatively, if you have your own devices, there's local and online wireless. Legend of Mana comes in as another done up port in the lineup of PS1 JRPGs that never got a power release until now. You can start playing Cob in about 10 ish minutes and stomach the first boss easy as. That said, with this game there is absolutely no shame in using a walkthrough, I swear it. If you have the expansion pack level of the Nintendo Switch Online membership, then of course you have the classic competitive experience available to you, that is Mario Kart 64. I did forget that outside of Grand Prix there's bombs just chilling in the middle of the road. Not only that, but with the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis app, you can play the Funkalicious roguelike Toe Jam and Earl, wherein you avoid foes while looking for ship parts in a randomly generated world. This game has the amazing futuristic technology of splitting the screen when you get too far and rejoining it later, something that games that aren't 30 years old still fail to achieve. Just watch out for those hula girls. Otherwise, fear not, as the latest Toe Jam and Earl are back in the groove is available for purchase, though in this case you'll have to unlock the random world, but it has plenty of new things, including many playable characters, even making room to play it as a double date. And if you've got just the baseline NSA subscription, then on the Super Nintendo app you can play Wild Guns, a fun Wild West with robots shooting gallery game for two. Otherwise, you can purchase Wild Guns Reloaded, which is an updated version of the game, but you can play as a sausage dog on a drone, 
and with four players. Zombies Got My Neighbours, which is also packaged with Ghoul Patrol, is a classic fun hard game where you run around looking for neighbours to save while shooting hordes of zombies blocking your way, with boss fights to boot. Meanwhile, just from the first level and not reading a manual, I gotta say I do not feel the sequel quite as much. SNK vs Capcom The Match of the Millennium is a lot like SNK Gals, which I have reviewed, but with Capcom Gals and boys, ugh, with a lot more options to boot. While only a two button fighter, there are plenty of moves at your disposal, which you will have to look up online. Windjammers was a game I only just learned was in fact originally an arcade game while writing this, and a sequel did come out recently, but I have not bought it. Nonetheless, it is a very fun, fancy air hockey, well, actually I think they're throwing frisbees, but you get the idea. Stubbs the Zombie, built on the Halo engine, is a true love story and an absolute blast to play in split screen co-op, although it does for some reason skip the tutorial when you start two player. And if creating your own zombie horde in the quest for love isn't enough to convince you, then look up the soundtrack and try not to get mad that it doesn't play for very much of the game. Quake allows you to play the campaign together, friendly fire optional, in the classic motion sickness genre, I mean FPS, where you can navigate twisted paths, blasting monsters, or just take out your frustrations on each other in a deathmatch. I'm no puzzle fan, but the likes of Puzzle Bobble and Puzzle Bobble 2 are an exception, both taking you head to head to burst the most bubbles before your screen fills. If you like that type of game but feel that it needs a bit more style or rhythm, then Toho Spell Bubble is just what you need. Faster yet the games go for longer as the match is to a beautiful Toho song wherein if you shoot a bubble on beat, you'll be rewarded. Plus, you can use spell cards to crush the dreams of your player too, thus keeping them forever dependent on you. Speaking of Toho, there's quite a great tag team fighting game on the Switch now and is actually an official spin-off. Personally, I love Mamizu, but my video covering it was trying to get Raimi justice for Smash. Ah well, at least she's playable here. For a mix of cooperative or competitive play, there is a literal launch title for the Nintendo Switch that I somehow forgot about, which is Super Bomberman R. You can play this classic style game story mode in 2 player, dividing and conquering the bomb field, or throw love grenades in versus mode. Broforce is a super fun, explosive, try not to kill each other mayhem filled 2D platformer where I feel being somewhat tied to each other isn't too much of an issue. Death Road to Canada is a game I wouldn't have even known was co-op if it wasn't for Obscurist Gaming's video, so do check them out. It is an almost Oregon Trail-esque game meets zombie horde loot and shooter with seizures here and there. Oh, and you can play as a dog who can shoot a gun and drive a car. Thank you. Wizard of Legend, or as we call it Wizleg, is a co-op action rogue light where you can revive each other to make the trials just a bit easier and to practice those arguments of finance you were sure to have. For the sake of not having to deal with implications of mixing gore in with the rest of the video, I won't be showing much, but the campaign of Resident Evil Revelations 2 allows for co-op, though it split screens in a weird kind of way. One of you gets to shoot and the other can flash the torch. But nothing like scares to keep you close, right? Taking a break from that, let's focus on some nice narrative experiences which are a bit of a mixed bag, such as Spiritfarer which got a physical release last year and yes, has co-op since one of you can be Daffodil. In this instance, I wouldn't really recommend it, again being a platformer, and when you're doing the minigames the camera won't zoom in as much. But you can do it, you're just probably better off just watching your girlfriend play it for you. I'm mentioning Haven just because it is a couples game, even though it's the kind my husband hates, uh, but just from what I've played of the tutorial, it doesn't seem so fun that way. Despite playing as the two characters, you both have to agree on the dialogue option, and outside only one person gets to control their movement at a time if someone gets further ahead. So if that does change later on, let me know, because I'm a little confused on how it's rated so high, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Oh, and it's definitely a game for older people. On the other hand, Bikes and Knights is a story about friendship that gives awesome picture book vibes and is definitely a bike built for two, even including some moments of competition. Back to the general mix of games from last year and earlier, we have Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, which requires you to navigate and protect your ship while saving cute bunnies, and reminds me of the Wii U exclusive Affordable Space Adventures. That said, I think this would play better with four pairs of hands on deck. Bacon Switch is a cute action baking game where you fight to protect cute dough creatures so that you can violently smash them into each other and throw big ones into the oven for huge scores. Death Squared is a puzzle game that proves two heads are better than one. Well, maybe. 
Either way, even as someone who's not much of a puzzle fan as I've said, it is pretty fun and you get to wear cute hats. This time, Samurai Warriors 5 is the Warriors game of choice, and as I mentioned in my review, it has the annoying habit of making some campaign missions single player only for literally no reason. However, you can help each other with the grind in the new Citadel mode, which are much shorter romps. Super Mario 3D World is a really, really good game, and a lot better when someone doesn't pick Toad, but at least you can steal their crown. The Switch version was bundled with Bowser's Fury, allowing for that weird assist-like co-op for whoever wants to be Bowser Jr. This year I've only got one multi-system co-op game in mind, I had others but no one to play them with, and that is Monster Hunter Rise. We are back again to having separate village and guild quests so you can carry your bow to their heart's content, for some of the game, with local wireless or online play. In fact, you can make it a double date of dinosaur and dragon destruction. And you can make your dog in the game and that's super cute! I've touched on a few competitive experiences already, but let's bring out the rest of them, such as Voice of Cards to the Isle Dragon Roars, though I imagine the upcoming sequel has the same thing. Uh, this is an RPG I have reviewed, but a little ways into the game, you unlock the game parlour and successfully beating the different variants of the parlour game allows you to play it from the main menu, bringing competitive set collecting shenanigans. Also, if you have the demo, you can play the most basic version of it. Speaking of cards, who doesn't like board games? With Let's Play Oink Games, you play classics like A Fake Artist Goes to New York, where you try to bluff your way with drawings or Deep Sea Adventure, where you pit your greed against each other to die for treasures. There are plenty of racing games on the Switch, such as Fast RMX giving you the high-speed, ultra-boosting feeling you might need with cool, futuristic rides. Meanwhile, Hot Wheels Unleashed came out, and well, I got it on PS5 because it looks prettier, it's very fun and you just have to check out some of the custom tracks people made, because that's where the real fun can be found. If you're all about unrealistic races, then Cruising Blast is a must-play with a variety of unlockable rides letting you take your fire truck or triceratops out on a high-speed, car-flipping, altered, repeating track ride. Mario Party Superstars is the supreme choice as far as Mario Party on the Switch goes, and well, sometimes you get to work as a team? If not, just sit back, relax and eat some cake afterwards, perhaps with a little bit less piranha plant on it. Before I get into dating sims for lonely hearts, there is in fact a competitive dating sim on the Switch, that being Monster Prom. Of course, playing with other people means you'll need patience while they read through it. The sequel Monster Camp is coming to Switch, which for me will be the day after Valentine's Day, but you Americans should get it in time. This year I've only played a Tomei dating sim such as the Stella Busterfellows review on my channel and, well, let's just say she was best boy and leave it here. If you need something more lighthearted and funny, then Cupid Parasite is a great choice, and when I do finish it, you can expect a review on the channel. <sighs> Alright, hopefully I didn't forget anything this time, and have a very happy Valentine's Day. Bye!